Hello everybody and welcome to my first um, kind of walkthrough with Blender editing with video or editing videos with uh, Blender I should say. Um, before I start I want to let everybody know first off that this is not really a tutorial and it's more of a walkthrough than what I would consider a tutorial. And the reason why I say that is because, don't get me wrong, I have been using Blender for a few years now, off and on, and um, I'm not, I'm still not the kind of person who could call myself a Blender guru, you know, so I'm not going to get on here and tell you all the things that you need to do, that, because a lot of it I'm still learning as I go, so, um, that's one thing I wanted to get off my chest. Um, the reason why I really wanted to do this video is because I've been noticing that the new Blender 3.5 doesn't have um, as many videos out for vi the video editor like they used to have back when I first started. When I started it was like around 2.8 and yeah, maybe just before that and uh, I could find them everywhere and these days you just barely ever see them so I decided maybe that's what I need to do because first of all when I get on Blender that's what I really use the most out of all of it I still mess around with the computer graphics you know the CGI and all that stuff but uh, the majority of the time I'm using Blender to edit my videos so um, that's the one thing I can actually do on here with confidence on just the basics on how to get you started and make it uh, easier for you to understand you know uh, now before I get started I'm going to explain something to people who haven't used Blender okay um, the majority of people that I've known who use Blender and me myself included or myself included we do certain things and uh, the one thing that we do is we get on uh, YouTube and we type in blender tutorial in the search uh, options and when we do that we uh, come across um, tutorials of how to do certain things on there so um, as I do this what we wh what's generally done is as I go through this okay whatever I do just follow behind me and do exactly what I do and the more you do it the more aware you're gonna get of what you're doing and the more familiar you're gonna get w with the program so don't 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 get you know to where you're wanting to go off and click on things and try to figure it out yourself just do the tutorials and be aware of what each function does and stuff like that according to the tutorial and the more you do that the better you'll get at it that's generally the way it's done so now this is my desktop browser and the reason why I have it on my desktop browser for is because um, you are going to have to learn uh, about blender and the first thing that's going to happen is is you're going to download this program and when you download this program it's going to be really really intimidating so uh, at least it was for me and it's uh, it's really it is really intimidating on first looks and a lot of people have mentioned how intimidating the opening screen is for it so um, I wanted to set it up to where you guys could see what the program looks for looks like and stuff like that now um, I am going to go ahead and uh, pop up my uh, OBS and switch it over to the main download so that you guys can see what it looks like so I'm gonna turn off display capture turn on browser and let you guys see the main website now this is the blender website that you need to go to 
now um, the address is blender.org slash download so you go here and when you go here you can download um, blender 3.6.1 LTS for Windows installer right here or you can go and get Linux and other versions below it. They also have an experimental one for down below if you wish to go down and look at those too. And uh, I uh, wanted to show you that so that you can uh, check this out and go to it. It's uh, like I said, blender.org slash download or just go into Google Chrome and type Blender download and it'll take you there. <coughs> so, once you get that, what's going to end up happening is you are going to um, you are going to get a download and after that you'll get a desktop shortcut and I believe it's in your start menu as well for Blender. I'm not quite sure, but it should it should be down up here at least. And when you go here to uh, click on your uh, download, I am I will show you what you will end up getting. Um, uh, let's see here. Well, actually, let me uh, let me just go ahead and keep it on display so that you guys can see it on the first uh, pop up. Now, this is what you will see at first, and like I said, this is very very intimidating. So don't let it discourage you, and don't let it intimidate you because. Um, we're not going to focus on all this. This isn't even the area that we're going to be discussing. Later on, I can get to all this and talk about it, but until until then, we are just going to be focusing on the video editor. So to get rid of this uh, nice little picture in the middle, what we do is we go to anywhere on the screen with, with our mouse, and we put, uh, click the pointer, anywhere and it disappears now this cube and all this stuff this isn't important right now okay what is important is up here on the top where you see all this it says layout modeling sculpting all the way to the end there's a plus sign and it says add workspace you add a new workspace by duplicating the current one or appending one from the user configuration you click on that and then a drop down option appears and you go all the way down to the bottom where it says video editing now you have render and rendering and video editing you want to choose video editing now this is what it will come to so now that I've got you there I can turn this off the video capture and bring in the scene that I've already got set up for you. So, with that, I can go right on to the video editing process. This is what we'll be working with. Now, on, uh, here, let me double check, make sure. Yeah, there we go and you guys are going to have to be able to see my mouse so I'm going to make it to where it captures the cursor and be sure to pay attention to the cursor as well to where I'm going because that's like I said this is all viewing okay and you have to know exactly what I'm doing and where I'm going so up here you have your file okay which is right here in save is very important so after you do a project you want to save everything that you do if you're in the middle of something and you know that it might 
crash or you know that uh, you're going to make a drastic change you might want to save before you go through here now the reason why I wanted to show you this menu here for is if you notice on this on the right hand side there are uh, keyboard shortcuts and shift control s and then control s is for save the same goes for new uh, control n and control o for open um, and that goes the same for everything there's always a shortcut on the sides to help you with what you need if you and it, it's a faster process too but for this I'm going to go through and I'm, I'm going to do the opposite of what most people in the tutorials do I'm going to use the actual tabs here so that you guys know what's going on and you know where to find the tabs so that you don't have to memorize all that stuff if at first because memorizing the uh, keyboard functions was a pretty hard task for me I'm still working on that today so here we have our preview we have our files which uh, is right here and that can be changed and then we have our sequencer right here on the left hand or on top on the left hand or right hand side you have your scene and down below you have your active your tools and stuff like that and your proxies now this area right here is where you set up your resolution your X and Y and your percentages and uh, I have mine set at 1920 on the X and then 1080 on the Y now on the percentage this is how you want it to render out do you want it to render out at 50% or at 100% now if you have a weaker computer I would suggest doing it at 50% um, 100% uh, will cause a lot of strain on your computer and when I say that I'm talking about computers with like a, a quad cores you know if you have four cores and uh, you're wanting to do animations or anything of that nature then it's going to cause strain on your computer at one time I could say that it was good for using blender on quad cores but after 1.8 uh, or yeah 2.8 sorry I I'd have to say that that's not the, the case you can still use it don't get me wrong but it's not going to be as nice to your computer as what it used to be so um, just be aware of that when you use them I right now have an 8 core CPU with a GPU on it but when I first started doing this I didn't have that so I had to work with the resolutions on that now this by default is set for 24 frames per second um, this is where you can change your frames per second I usually keep it at 30 you can also keep it at 60 it's all up to you um, just below that is your frame range and that's from your start when it ends and w each step uh, now 250 is right down here at the bottom too it's uh, the final frame of the playback rendering range 250 250 those are generally the same so that's what that's all about now this is your output uh, this is your output folder basically where do you want your your video or photos to go to I'm gonna set that up at um, at a on my videos which is here on the left hand side for system where you see volumes up on top system and then uh, right here I'm going it says home desktop documents I'm gonna go down the videos and right here I am going to choose unedited videos and then working with audio and video now I've already got uh, these done right here part two part three and part four and I'm redoing this video because I messed up on part one with the beginning 
when I was uh, popping uh, the program and everything and I'm glad I did it anyhow because then I could redo it and go and show you the website and let you see where you needed to download from since I already had the program I didn't do the download but what I am going to do is I'm going to click on that and it'll bring this down here to the bottom it'll bring that name down to the bottom I come to my keyboard and I hit backspace and I delete the mp4 and the 2 on there and I do part 1 so I do that I come over to my mouse and I right click on it and now it is set up to where this video will be part 1 so I turn around <coughs> and I am going to add I, I've got that set up now on my output file I got it set up to the the the, the f file I want it to be so now I come down to file format I don't want it as a PNG that's a photo it says JPEG and all these down here Tanga um, uh, all these are basically there's a TIFF right there the WebP um, I'm going to go for uh, FF no FFmpeg. Now they also have AVI uh, raw and A AVI uh, JPEG, but I'm gonna go for uh, FFmpeg and then RGB right here instead of black and white. That's the color. So now here in encoding, after we are done with the output, we go to encoding. You have your container now. Matroska is an MKV and you'll see that in OBS if you guys use OBS that's what they want you to use I don't use it if you guys want to use Matroska you can um, I usually come down here and I get uh, MPEG4 which is MP4 now WebM is something that I've tried out too and uh, I used to use it but I stopped using it for some reason um, it's really condensed in file size so if you want to make it a uh, smaller size on your files you can use web webm but it's not a fami too familiar uh, program now on your uh, video codec you h264 is generally the video codec that a lot of streamers use you know on YouTube and uh, all of the, uh, them, t Twitch, YouTube, all that. So you can use H.264. I use it on my OBS all the time. But in this case, I am going to come down here and I'm going to use MPEG 4 DIVX. And then on the output quality, you can. Uh, choose constraint bitrate lossless percent uh, perceptually lossless high quality medium quality low quality very low quality and lowest quality I'm gonna go with high quality um, encoding speed you can use uh, good or s slowest or real time I'm just gonna keep it at good now with my audio it, it's set at no audio by default but I'm going to switch that to AAC and instead of stereo I am going to put it on mono so now uh, you can keep all that at uh, whatever you want to keep it but that's my settings those are the settings there then you have me metadata which I never use and uh, post processing which I never never use that either but it's checked anyhow so that is basically what you need to be aware of when it comes to just the video editing now you'll have more stuff in here that you have to deal with when it comes to other things if you get curious with blender and want to do it but that is the basic gist of blender for uh, the settings and everything.
<coughs> so I've gone through all of this over here on the right hand side and the reason why I've done that is because this is very important for you to get right um, before you do do your project okay and get everything set so now this is your preview this is going up here on the top in the middle it's going to show you everything that you're doing down here in the sequencer which is at the bottom on the left hand side or in the middle whichever one you want to do it here's your channels and I've got quite a few channels on there but uh, the, what we want to do first is we want to uh, add a movie so we come down here to the top of the sequencer where it says view select marker add strip image and we go to add and a drop down menu will appear and with from that drop down menu you choose movie so you've got a movie that you need to to choose you come over here to the left hand side where it says volume systems and bookmarks and all that and you choose system you go down I go I go down to video unedited video and let's see let's get a game out I will put a game in here and that game will be uh, hmm. Wait, I'll come back up here actually and I will put uh, Resident Evil the village in so I am going to go ahead and uh, hit add movie and boom automatically there it is there's your movie so you have your movie that's popped up on the sequencer the blue part is the video and the green part is the audio so after you've done that what you need to do is you need to come over here to the bottom left hand side or right hand side and down here you'll see these tabs over here at the far end you need to make sure that where it says strips tools modifiers and proxies you need to make sure that the tab strips is showing first now in those in the, this strip uh, area it's got a uh, sound which is has the volume and then pan mono and display wave so what I want to do is I want to click on this green one and then come over here and I want to select display wave so now when I hit display wave what's going to happen is a, a display wave is going to appear on that bit on that audio right there if you see right here on strip previews down at the bottom it's at zero percent so by the time that gets done it will uh, it will be able to uh, show you the, the, the display waves now I want to show you how long this video is so what I do is I take my mouse and on the ro roller in the middle of the left and right uh, click button I scroll towards me outward so that it becomes uh, it, it, it zooms out now this is a longer video so it's going to take it a little bit while and right here at the bottom you'll see this scroller uh, I can bring this here and this will show you so this is how, how big it is now up here on the top is the hours how long it is this is one hour, this is two hours, this is three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, and eight hours. Now, as you can see, this, the sound waves have a uh, waveform, or the display waveform has shown up inside of the audio. So we've got that taken care of. Now, I've shown you the sound waves there, and 
here is mono if you want it in mono if you don't want it in mono you check you do that check on there so we have the video now and I want to go zoom back right into where it is I take the scroller here <coughs> I center the beginning of the video right into the center of the sequencer and I start to scroll down now if you want to make these bars smaller up here on the left right hand side there's another scroller and you'll notice that on both of these scrollers there's a little bitty dot there now I can do it here with that one and it'll stretch that out like that or I can do it here and it can stretch it upwards like this but that's only on the edge right where that sequencer is so what I want to do is I want to bring it smaller which means I've got to do all, all this stuff and this is by no means easy but I just wanted to show you guys what is involved here if you do want to do this and this is a relatively long one so the more that you have to do with this setup the harder it's going to be in order to to do this but that's basically the functions of it um, you can make it smaller but it's it's something that you have to work with but it's these dots at the end of these scrollers that you have to use to scroll left and right scroll up and down now to zoom in it's just the opposite of zooming out I zoom in by taking my uh, mouse uh, roller and rolling towards the monitor or towards the computer and uh, it goes in further and I can come, all right, I come over here and I do this just keep it going and mind you too this is at 2 uh, 50 so this isn't even like a 15 minute video in that open space now as you can see right here I had to uh, manually set that in there now the way that you take care of this is this is where you start learning the configuration and everything uh, the, the buttons and everything right here is uh, snapping use snapping it's currently off if I want it on then I turn it on so here we go we've got it on you see that blue light right there and this white or blue uh, cursor line is where I'm at in the video so you will see right here that that's what I've got going on there um, I am currently at eight seconds or no I'm at 13 seconds now this is how you uh, move the vi or along the video to where you can see what's going on. Now I'm going to scroll out by rolling back on my mouse wheel. And I will go to 4 minutes. And you will see. Well, maybe that it will have to be longer than that there we go and you will see what I'm talking about there is the video right there so 
that is what this cursor function is for right here so uh, now right here if you notice I want 15 minutes so I go up here I click right there at the 15 minutes and the blue cursor goes right to it now I don't want it to just be at as close as I can to 15 minutes I want it at 14 minutes or 50 it's at 14 minutes and 56 seconds so what I do is I want to come to my keyboard keyboard and right where the directional buttons are with the arrows the one that goes left right up and down I want to hit the right arrow button and it will go to the right so I I hold down on it if I want to and it will move to the 15 minutes and then when it gets close I stop holding down on it and I tap it until it gets to it and now I went over by six so I tap the left arrow button in the direction once until I come down to it so now I have that blue cursor at 15 minutes so what do I do with that okay after I get it on the 15 minutes I come back down here where these uh, numbers are right here this is your current frame where this blue cursor is at it says 27,000 the start is 1 which is all the way over here where we were at before and this is the ending now the ending is right here this is the beginning this is the end okay and it's at eight seconds but I want that to come all the way up to the 15 minutes so what I do is I take 27,000 which I could do this and I could hit control and C and then I can hit control and V and do it that way or I could type it in manually whichever one I do and when I do that all of a sudden I got 15 minutes this is the 15 minute area that I want to uh, to edit now <coughs> I just uh, did the blue little cursor thing from one side to the other automatically and how I did that is I held down on the shift button and on the direction button for le the left direction button I press that and it went to the beginning now if I wanted to go to the end where the 15 minutes is I do the same thing I hold down on the shift button and I hit the right direction button and now we have it at the 15 minute now if I just want to scroll around like inside of there I can do that with just holding down on the left directional button or the right directional button um, there's no no keyframes for uh, to jump to which is up and down at the moment so up and down doesn't work but left and right does so that's how you navigate there <coughs> and down here in the bottom just remember this is your current frame <coughs> this is the frame you're on this is the ending frame okay this is the beginning frame now <coughs> you bring it back to the zero or the one by hitting control direction uh, button le to the left left direction button and uh, you're at, at one and you can see that the current frame is at one now the snapping this is where we get into another important uh, is another important thing now you want to keep your audio and your video in sync it always has to be the same number all right and when I say numbers what I'm talking about is um, here I'll show you first how to cut okay I'm gonna take and go with my shift button and my directional all the way to the end at 15 minutes now in order to cut the video and audio what we want to do is we want to make sure that this audio and this video strip is both highlighted 
Now how we can do that is I can go and I can hit A, which is all, and you can do that when there's nothing else on here, okay? You can just hit A and hit all, or you can take your left click button and you can hold down on it and then move your mouse and it creates that direct that square thing right there you can come down here like this and it hits it and as long as those both are highlighted it's fine now what I want to do is I want to create a cut right there at the 15 minutes okay so what I do is I have to hit K on the keyboard but before you do your cut I want to mention something that's very important okay um, it, it's about your your mouse and which side of this blue cursor it's on now if I have the cursor on, on this on the left side of that cur uh, that cursor and I hit K everything on the left side of that cursor is going to be highlighted and everything on the right hand side of that cursor won't be highlighted so what I need to do is I need to set it up to where everything on the right hand side of that cursor is highlighted so right now my next move is I'm going to teach you guys something that's very valuable to me and a lot of people on YouTube those in even uh, add this into their tutorial it's the undo but how, how to undo stuff so I want to undo that cut so what I do is I hit control and then I tap Z and once I tap Z that cut is gone it's no longer there I hit shift d left direction show you guys that it's not there then hit shift in right direction and put it back now I want to do a cut but I want the uh, strip on the right hand side to be highlighted and the strip on the left hand side not to be highlighted so what I do is I come down and I click on K alright so now we have the strip on the the right hand side highlighted the strip on the left hand is not highlighted and the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to teach you another uh, function that is very important and it's the grab I want to grab both of those highlighted strips and I want to move them to the right away from that strip so what I do is now that they're both highlighted I hit G okay now I can do both of them like this okay by just moving them this direction alright now what I'm going to do is I am not going to do that so instead I am going to do another trick that I'm going to tell you right now so I take and instead of hitting my left button to release this grab what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the right button and it's going to snap back to where it was now I hit my right ta uh, click button on the mouse and bam it goes right back now we can do it that way which really isn't safe because you like I said you have to keep the numbers on when you go into grab you'll see it there'll be those numbers right there where it says right there 27,000 the top uh, video and the bottom audio both have to say 27,000 in order for the audio and video to be synced so that is what I'm talking about so the safest way to do this without messing that up is to hit grab like I just did and then take your uh, not your pinky finger but the one next to it and bring it well that's if you're got it in type form well just go down and hit X now once I hit X if you notice I've got that little line that's running left and right on the bottom that right there is going to keep everything in line and if I try to go up or down it's not working okay but if I come left and right it works so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this over like this and then I'm gonna left click and it'll stay there now if I hit right click it would have snapped back now 
I'm going to take and just click on the sequencer in any spot other than the clips and or the strips and I'm going to get rid of that highlight and then I'm going to hold down on my left click button on the mouse and I'm going to do the little square thing come over these strips that I have still inside of it now I'm going to show you what snapping is all about now um, I am going I got that highlighted now what I'm going to do is do my shift button and my left or left direction button to bring my cursor all the way back to one I've got both of those clips highlighted so now what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to go to my keyboard and I'm going to press G then I'm going to press X again and like I said before G X if you notice all the numbers match up it's one one at the the first uh, frame and then it's 26 999 at the at the at the end of it so now I take and I hit grab and I then press X and I can either use my mouse to move this or I can use my directional button on the right hand side to move it whichever one I want to do and then you can also do the right or the left uh, directional button too now you will see right here using my directional buttons that uh, once I get close to the one it will automatically snap into place once I stop you see so after that I can either hit enter or I can right click on the mouse and it's in place so now I have shown you how to do uh, the grab I've shown you how to cut I've shown you the cursor and what it did now I told you that uh, the which one's the video which one's the audio I've shown you the display waveform and I've shown you about which direction on this cursor right here that you need to do uh, your cut on so that you can have one side highlighted or the other and that is very important by the way but now I'm going to show you a trick that I use and with the snapping you don't always have to use it but you can do this with or without the snapping on so say I've got the snapping off and I hit grab okay and I want this to go snug back over where it was so what I do is I run this until it's in the red and this is an old uh, video editing trick and then when it's in the red I just right click and it automatically snaps right back at the end so that it doesn't cause any gaps or anything like that now if I want it now with this cursor there's another trick I can do I can take my mouse put it on there and I can hold down on the left click button and I can just scroll it along like this Okay, anywhere I want to so I can tap here I can use my direction buttons or I can come over here hold down with the left click button and I can bring it wherever I want it so we've got that covered now I'm gonna run this over so you guys can see that that trick I showed you um, will make it to where there's no gaps there and let me get it a little closer to the 15 there we go now right here all right so now I am on this side that's not highlighted the strips it's not highlighted and I want you to notice something whenever I get onto the 15 minutes there's going to be a highlight that goes around the video up in the preview and that will show you that you are on the highlighted strip 
and you see that yellow that means that you are within the highlighted strip come back here and you're off of the highlighted strip so now you know to keep an eye out for that and this is very important because in the editing process you're going to have to be able to cut and move things that are inside the video and you're going to have to know which side of the mouse or which side of this cursor your mouse is on you're also going to have to know when you're on the highlighted strip and when you aren't on the highlighted strip stuff like that so I uh, believe this is all that I've covered in my first part one video for this but I am not for sure so I am going to go ahead and end this now because I do not want to go over and end up having to redo my second one because I did it but I do want to emphasize one thing though up over here on the right hand side down in the sequencer at the bottom oh please make sure that you always have this on your strip tool because you are going to be using this quite a bit there's a lot of things that you're going to be doing which we'll be discussing here later on but I just wanted to bring the basics to you right here on how to do it and I'll be uh, telling you which buttons I'm pushing as I go along so it's you're you're going to go back over this stuff again just I wanted to get this down first so that you're good to go and I will I will leave it at that because so, we're going on the 46 47 minute time thing so yeah, I hope you guys learned something and if you have you know good and all I can say is come back for part two and we'll get that covered too so thank you guys for watching